In this video, you're going to see an Italian high-speed train with an interesting story, what its highest travel class is like, and you're going to learn why this landscape is in danger. Hi everyone and welcome to this video. This time I'm in Bologna in Italy. With approximately 400,000 inhabitants, it is the country's seventh most populous city and an important transportation hub. And I'm here at Bologna Centrale to make a trip on the Frecce Argento train to Verona. On the map you can see the approximate route of the train. On its way to Verona, it doesn't make any stops and it takes 52 minutes to cover a distance of 115 kilometers. And in this video I'm going to travel on an ETR 700. For those of you that are not familiar with Italy's railway system, there are two companies that operate high-speed trains. One is the state-owned Trenitalia and the other is the privately owned NTV. Trenitalia's high-speed trains are called Le Frecce, the arrows. With top speeds of 250 km per hour, the Frecce Argento trains are the second fastest in Trenitalia's fleet. There are different types of trains that operate under the Frecce Argento brand, but I will tell you more about it later. Ok, so now I am at the northern edge of Bologna's historic district, where the main train station, Bologna Centrale, is located. Each year it handles more than 58 million passengers, making it the number 5 station in Italy as far as passenger numbers are concerned. To put that into perspective, the busiest railway station in Italy is used by more than 150 million passengers in normal years. I have left the main hall towards the platforms. Now I am standing on platform number 1 and on the opposite side you can spot an Itaro train, which I have already covered in two videos. There is still plenty of time left until my train arrives, so let's explore the railway station a bit. But before doing so, allow me to introduce you to my booking. I purchased a trip in the highest service class, which on the ticket appeared as business, while on the website I believe it was shown as first class. Anyway, this ticket comes with a better onboard product, while lounge access is not included. That partly explains the next scene, in which I'm roaming around the station looking for a snack. So here's the main hall again, which looks surprisingly small. But as the station has a surface of 78,000 square meters, there has to be more than just this tiny building. And yes, there is another hall, where you can find various shops, restaurants and a pharmacy that you can see in front of me. This is a station that was built in the 19th century. However, it received a major upgrade in 2013. An upgrade that one cannot see from here. But somewhere below my feet, there is a huge underground railway station used by the Italian high-speed trains that I have shown in various videos. I intend to present that part of the station in another production. And these are the western platforms. You can see some regional trains waiting here. From what I have seen so far, I would conclude that this is not a bad station once you understand where you have to go. On Google it has a rating of 4 stars at this point. Finally I found myself a coffee house to get some energy for the upcoming trip. And just like in a railway or airport lounge, they have some screens in there to show the passengers when they should leave to catch their train. And here's my train, a train that was never supposed to operate in Italy, because 16 of those train sets were originally ordered by a joint venture between the Dutch state railway company NS and the airline KLM. The Belgian railway enterprise SNCB ordered another three train sets. They were all intended to run between Amsterdam and Brussels. Regular services commenced in December of 2012, but were suspended just a month later by the Belgian authorities questioning the reliability of the rolling stock after numerous delays and cancellations. 
In June of 2013, Dutch authorities banned those trains from their rails altogether, while SNCB refused to take its order. Then, after long negotiations, the Italian state railway business Trenitalia bought all these trains and eventually put them into service in 2019. Surprisingly, after all the turmoil they have allegedly caused in Belgium and the Netherlands, they have been rather inconspicuous in Italy. This is my seat, 13D. It is arguably not a good choice if you want to make a trip report. Luckily, some window seats remained vacant, so I could still create this video. In my opinion, the cabin is modern and comfortable. The seats are arranged in a 1x2 configuration. There are baggage racks that you have seen when I boarded the train, and of course you can put smaller pieces of baggage on the overhead racks as well. At the beginning of this video, I told you about the two major train companies in Italy and that the Frecce Argento is one of three high-speed rail services that Trenitalia operates. But things are changing and the Frecce Argento brand may actually be discontinued soon. Why? Well, basically there are three types of trains that are marketed as Frecce Argento trains. The older ETR 485, the ETR 600 and 610 respectively, and this train here, the ETR 700. Earlier this year, reports surfaced stating that the ETR 600s and 700s would be rebranded to serve as Freccia Rossa trains in future, leaving the ETR 485s with an unclear outlook. They might be used as Freccia Bianca or Intercity trains, but that's pure speculation. Okay, we have left Bologna and we are roughly 12 kilometers from where this trip started. You can notice here that the surroundings are quite flat and that's because this part of Italy is essentially one big plain. Italy has a rather distinctive geography and geology which goes beyond its famous shape resembling a boot. Now when you look at the map, you can easily recognize that it is quite a mountainous place with the Alps in the north and the Apennines traversing the country from north to south. Only in northern Italy there is a continuous piece of flat land which includes the Po Valley. What is amazing is that the regions that lie within this relatively small area contribute more than 50% to Italy's gross domestic product because they essentially form the country's industrial heartland where many world-famous companies are located. From the fashion brands of Milan to the automakers of Turin and Maranello, the topography of that part of Italy certainly had a major influence on its economic development. On the screen you can see that we are now traveling with a speed of close to 200 km per hour and this isn't even the fastest train in Italy. While we are rushing through the Italian countryside, let's have a look at the cabin amenities. So we have this tray table that makes some high-pitched noises when you try to use it. To my left there is a trash can and you can also find an electric socket next to the seat. In first class you have the chance to try a little Italian snack and you get a drink as well. All of that is included in the ticket price. Let's see for yourselves. I'll be back in 46 seconds.
Okay everyone, here I am again. Let's talk a little bit about the internet connection on this train. In the past I had some trouble with that on the Freccia Rossa, but this time everything worked out fine. Just like in the Italo, you get access to an onboard entertainment system once you connect to the Wi-Fi network. There you can choose between various movies, TV shows, newspapers and other things. By the way, there's an app for all of that, but I just opened everything in the browser. Now the speed of the internet connection wasn't exactly impressive, but I guess it's enough for basic tasks such as messaging and reading a website. And that's what I was talking about earlier, there are no mountains whatsoever in this region. You can see a lot of flat agricultural land here that is irrigated by the Po River, which flows only a couple of miles from here. The river has obviously a huge importance for the region, so it's not surprising that the drought of this summer caused a lot of concern. The problem is that this was not just a singular event. Satellite imagery released by the European Space Agency shows that the Po River has been drying up over the past couple of years, bringing the challenge of water shortage to some of Italy's wealthiest and most populous regions. Consequently, cities such as Verona and Pisa started to ration drinking water during the peak of the drought. We are around 20 minutes away from our destination. Time to do a quick lavatory check. The floor could use some more cleaning. Other than that, there's nothing noteworthy here. As this trip is coming to an end, let me give you my evaluation. Given the fact that the Freccia Argento is just the number two in what Trenitalia offers in the high-speed segment, it is still a nice way of traveling. The cabin was comfortable, there was this welcome service with the drink and the snack. However, it does not feel the same as on a Freccia Rossa train, so I'm not sure what to think about the rebranding. In case somebody has already tried the ETR 700 as a Freccia Rossa, please feel free to share your travel experience in the comment section below. I believe that sooner or later I'm going to create a trip report about it as well. We are at the very edge of Verona now, so we are about to arrive at Porta Nuova railway station. Verona has a population of around 260,000 people and it is definitely worth a visit. The arena you see in this footage was built in 30 AD. It is still in use today, in fact it will be the venue of the closing ceremony of the 2026 Winter Olympics. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the video, if so please don't forget to subscribe and to press the like button which helps this channel a lot. So that's it for this time, thanks for tuning in and have a great day wherever you're watching.